All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Yatazadak here of Israel. Let's start off by giving honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yom Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, double honors to the others and apostles, Great Mill Stone. Now, um, this is the uh, part two video uh, to the lesson touching on the um, afflictions of the just and the work of the ministry. Right, giving all honor and glory to you, Bashim Yom Shai, Bashim Kafadash. Lord willing, you're edified. Right, so let's get right into it. So, I can just try to adjust this right here. Right, so let's get back where we uh we left off. Right, this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 21. Right. Zechariah chapter 8 and 21. All right. Because again, right, that's what this lesson is focusing on, right? Um, the affliction of those that had have separated from this world, right? Got into this word, preaching the word for those that can pre for those that can uh, go out and teach. Right, those that are uh, making exhortation videos, right? Like Al Bashim Al Shai said, right? He gave different offices onto different men, right? Different uh, talents to each individual, but at the end of the day, the point is is to increase the talents that you have been given, right? Um, like the scriptures say, right? Too much is given, much will be required, right? And, right, if you're not set fast, you'll be taking even which that that thou hast, right? If you're lukewarm, right? If you're falling, right? And from your steadfastness, right? Scriptures speak about, right? A just man falls seven times and get it back up again, right? Zechariah 8 and 21. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord. And to seek the Lord of hosts, I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahabashim El Shai of hosts in Jerusalem to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God with, is with you. Right? So in these current times, right, we, we are that uh, small sanctuary. Right? We are those to whom the world does not seek. Right? The world is actually going to encompass about, right, like Hamashiach Yahweh I said, Right, onto the Jews back during the ancient Roman Empire, right? He said, there comes a day when your enemies will gather a trench right, right around about you, right? So you see this happening also in these latter days, right? Because scriptures say, what once was will be done, right? Nothing new under the sun, right? So you have, you're going to have a, 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 um, gathering against the elect, the remnant, right? But at the end of the day, you cannot pluck the elect out of the Lord's hand, right? Because he has engraven them upon, on the palm of his right hand, which is Hamashiach Yahushai, right? Who you call Jesus Christ, right? The, the uh, Holy One of Israel, right? Like scriptures say, right? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 72. And, um... Verse 1. Let's get that. Psalm 72 and 1. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Right? This was King David talking about Solomon, right? Which is Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? And who are the king's sons in these latter days, right? Those that are conforming to the image of the son. Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? Not conforming to the image of the beast, which is so-called white man, which is ultimately the uh, uh, counterpart 
the evil counterpart of of Jacob, right? Um, the children of Esau, right? The wicked of the earth, right? Most High God is a God is a God of balance, right? So He has created the wicked, right, for they just to be destroyed, right? The righteous, right, to be saved. You see, there is a a a um a science, right, to the Lord's doings, right? Now let's see actually um what what that says in the uh, online etymology dictionary let's see what science is going off the spirit so let's see if we can find something All right um science noun mid 14th century state or fact of knowing what is known knowledge of something acquired by study information assurance of knowledge certitude certainty but more french science Knowledge, learning, application, corpus of human knowledge from, from Latin, 12th century, scientia, knowledge, a knowing expertness from science, scient, scientist, genitive, intelligent, skilled, present, participle of sire uh, to know. The original notion of the Latin verb probably is to separate one thing from another to distinguish or else to incise. This is related to sindir to cut, divide from P root, sky to cut, split, source also Greek, skizain to split, brand cleave, Gothic skydun, Old English siadun to divide, separate. OED writes the oldest English sense of the word is now restricted to theology and philosophy from late 14th century in English as book learning, also a particular branch of knowledge or of learning, systematized knowledge regarding a particular group of objects, also skillfulness, cleverness, craftiness from 14, uh, circa 1400 as experimental knowledge and also a skill resulted Resulting from training, handicraft, a trade for late 14th century in the more specific sense, specific sense of collective human knowledge, especially so like it, especially that gained by systematic observation, experiment, and reasoning, the modern restricted sense of body of regular or methodical observations or propositions concerning so like it, concerning a particular subject or Speculation is attested by 1725 in 17th century, 18th century. This commonly was philosophy. All right now, we're getting somewhere. Um, so it's regarding uh, philosophy, right? Um, which is all right, uh, witchcraft, it's all an enchantment, right? This is part of Esau's uh, modern day language, right? It's all, right, psychobabble, right? It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's meant to promote confusion, right? You see, I read, right, talking about knowledge, reasoning, philosophy, right? Which is Esau, right? He has a way in which he communicates within amongst his own people right through his through his media right you look at certain media certain commercials right you look at the at the uh, uh um reasoning behind how certain things are are perpetrated right it's 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 meant uh to to be uh, made right to give a sign on to his people just like his language right everything that he puts out right it's really to strengthen his people to weaken the minds of the so-called black hispanic and native americans right by right promoting right uh confusion to our people right but to his people right because you got to remember these other nations they know who they are they know right their former days right but israel has left off from their former 
uh, practices as a whole, right? So let's read on down. The sense of non-arts studies is attested from 1670s. The distinction is commonly understood as between theoretical truth, Greek, episteme, and methods for affecting practical results, techni, which is where you get the word technique, right? But science sometimes is used for practical applications and art for applications of skill. The predominant modern use, natural and physical science, right? Which is science really has to do with reasoning, right? Um, techniques, practical results, philosophies, right? Because, you know, through Esau's philosophy, he um, promotes a, 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 right, his agenda, right which is people when they when they acknowledge right that his people that their people are for them are for them only right they're going to look for certain signs right um in which they will they will acknowledge in their in their conscience right they will say well look this this has been put out in the media right because we are the people in rulership and they're trying to send us a message right this is how the Edomites think right the predominant modern use natural and physical science generally re restricted to study of the phenomena of the material universe and its laws is by mid 19th century science since people must do it is a socially embedded activity it progresses by hunch vision and intuition you see what I mean I didn't have to go any further Right, because when you understand, you understand the the meaning behind words. You understand what Esau, right, his main agenda is, right, to keep his people on the know, right, and to keep the Israelites in the midst of confusion, right, because they don't know these people are are the Greeks or the Romans, right? Well, they technically they're not the original Greeks and Romans, the 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 original right people, right. Because they took that from right the Greeks, the Polynesians, right? Just like Alexander the Great, right? Which is a which was which which is an Edomite, but was a Macedonian, just like his father Philip, right? But these are Edomites at the end of the day. When they went and conquered these other lands, they put they gave they named lands after them, right? Like Alexandria, which is Egypt, when they conquered Egypt. Right, they took on the customs of these ancient civilizations, the manner of dress, right, um, and so on and so forth, right. Which is why the scriptures say that Esau, the so-called white man, he beth all people to himself, right. Um, much of it has changed through time. It does not record a closer approach to absolute truth, but the alteration of cultural contexts. That influence it so strongly. Facts are not pure, and unsullied bits of information culture also influences what we see and how we see it. Salakia so theories, moreover, are not inexorable inductions from facts. The most creative theories are often imaginative visions imposed upon facts, right? So we saw owns the media. And he imposes, right, his facts upon the populace, which is his subjects, right, which are the other nations, which are also the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right? So he, he imposes his facts upon the other nations, as well as God's chosen people, which are the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right, because he's in, he's in rulership, Right? Um, in order to forward his enchantments, right, his purpose, right, in his in his uh, so-called democratic um, state, right. In science, you must not talk before you know. In art, you must not talk talk before you do. In literature, you must not talk before you think. To bind someone with science, confused by the use of big words or complex explanations, 
This is tested from 1937, originally noted as a phrase from Australia and New Zealand, right? And these are all enchantments, right? His language, right? The fact that, right, he calls cursive, cursive, curse words. Not that these things have an effect on you, right? Because Jake, you know, he's all bugged out, right? He thinks, oh, you know, if I say this, if I say that, it's a curse word and I'm going to tangle myself. Right, the scriptures say there is no enchantment against Jacob. Right, so it's not about right the languaging, right these things, right. Witchcraft is more of having to do with deception, right. Uh, witches, right. That more or less has to do with uh, the fact that you use right. Um, right, you notice a lot of eaves, they're getting into this planting, into this gardening, right, uh, phase, right, where they're dealing with herbs, right, and herbs is what the ancient witches and warlocks used, right, if you're a drug dealer, then you're a warlock, right, you smoke weed, you sell it, you're a war, you're, you're a witch, you're a warlock. Right, because these things alter the minds of the people, right? Certain psychedelics, right? You saw, right, he's trying to make psychedelics return, right, in the form of his, right, um, right, his so called, right, health based, right, energy drinks and whatnot. But at the end of the day, Right. If it's if it's not sound, then the Lord is not dealing with that, right? If it's something you have to uh, burn and inhale and defile your body, the Lord is not dealing with that. If it's something that that right, the Lord God said you should not do, then then right, the Lord's not dealing with that nonsense, right? But again, this is all part of Esau's uh, system, right? To uh, pervert the meaning of things, right? So Psalm 72 and 3, 72 and 2, He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in, in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generations. Right? It's talking about Hamash and Yahushai. You shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. Right? Because ultimately, Hamash and Yahushai, right, is going to turn as that avenger of his people. Right? Because right now, right, we're in desolation. We're a nation in exile, right? Lord God compared compared America, Babylon, the Great, into a, uh, a perpetual, into a um, spiritual wilderness, like like other Yashwamba, Yashwamba. Um, so like recently, he recently brought that up, right? That the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, what happened, right? They were, um. They were they were uh, made to walk in circles upon the wilderness, right? This is what America Babylon the Great perpetrates, right, onto the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, right? Fear, confusion, right, uh, division, even amongst the Northern and Southern Kingdom tribes, right? But Amon should go shy, right? He's going to come down like rain upon the earth, like the latter rain, right? Which gives the increase, right? For the seasons that, that, that come past, which you would call, right? Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the time of reaping, right? Um, Psalm 72 and 7 
in his days shall the righteous flourish in, in abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth you shall have dominion also from sea to sea from the river unto the ends of the earth and they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow down before him and his enemies shall lick the dust the kings of Tarhish and of the isles shall be brings presents the kings of Sheba and Saba shall offer gifts yeah all kings shall fall down before him all nations shall serve him for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth the poor also in him that hath no helper he shall spare the poor and the needy and shall save the souls of the needy right he shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence and precious shall their blood be in his sight right it's so ultimately what the elect of the nation of Israel right redeeming their soul right um from him that was stronger than them right starting with his word right delivering them delivering them out from the corruptions of this world right does not the scripture say that precious in the eyes of Yahweh Shemel Shai is the death of the saints right so you're gonna have right some die for the truth you're gonna have some that will endure them to the end that will get delivered right it will be seen amongst the children of men right uh which is Vanadam right which is generally speaking about right the other nations right including the so-called white man right psalm 72 and 15 and he shall live and to him shall be given of the gold of sheba prayer also shall be made for him continually and daily shall he be praised there shall be a handful of corn and the earth upon the top of the mountains the fruit the rough shall shake like Lebanon and they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth his name shall endure forever his name shall be continued as long as the Sun men shall be blessed in him all nations um, shall call him blessed right because Solomon was Hamashik Yahushai right um, and the uh, he, he 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 was right or Salakia right um Yahushua was Solomon right in the past in the uh, what you would call reincarnation in the Holy Bible right because clearly this is not talking about Solomon's kingdom this is talking about the kingdom of 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 Christ which is Hamashik Yahushai right. Um, Psalm 72 and 18 Blessed be the Lord God The God of Israel Who only doth wondrous things And blessed be his glory His name forever And let the whole earth be filled with his glory Amen and amen Right So this was David talking about Solomon Right But we know the description that he gave He described the elect He described Right the return of Hamash Yahushai For those that can hear right now we can analyze that real quick psalms 72 and 6 let's get that in the uh blue letter right it's like a blue letter bible Psalm 72 and 6. You shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. Right? Right. So, Yerad Kamatar, right? 
uh, going down like rain, right? Al guys, right? Guys is mean to to uh, to cut, right? Or to shave, right? More in the sense of uh, shaving, guys, right? Which is where you get that word, right? Shorn, a mowing. Right, so going down like the rain upon the moon, right? Um, right, um, ka, uh, right, rabab. It means the multitudes, ka meaning like, right? The yam making it plural, like multitudes, right? Like, like they are the multitudes, right? Right, the water, zaraz, zarazayup, or zarazayup. Um, like violent showers, right? Is a rap drip, uh, Arabic, um, which is, uh, what is that? The rap, right? Aramaic. Right, looks like that is uh Zawara Yapatha Yapath Yapatha Right Ember Vehemians Right in the sense of uh right uh Vehemians right which is like uh a, right, Bohemian shower. Right, because let's look at the uh, violent shower. So that's what it means, right? Coming down like rain upon the shorn. Um, Right, um, right, like multitudes, multitudes, right, of, of, uh, right, the water, but we know water, that's not, right, it's not what it's talking about. Water is Mayam. is talking about right vehemence right or multi, like multi multitudes Zar Zayap right um vehemence upon the earth he means right Arataza, right? And it says in the book of uh numbers, right, that Amashi Yo Shai, right? Right, what does it say? Right, so not only do you go precept upon precept, line upon line, but you also go into the Hebrew, right? You go into the Greek, right? So what does it say? Um, Wayarad, Mayaikwab, Waha Abayad, 
Shariad Ma'ayar. All right, out of Jacob, show he have the, show he come, shall come he that have, that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Right. But Yerod, it means right to come down. Right, he will come down from Jacob, right, and he will cause to perish, right. Them that are that remain, right, which is uh, Sharad, that survive from the city. Talking about the second coming of Hamashi Gelb Shai, right? Why? Because vengeance is in his heart, right? He has a controversy with nations and recompense onto those that have touched, right, his people, right? Um, so this is the uh, Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, right? And that's the spirit. Right, I, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, not, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise, shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. Right, because you have, right, ah, uh, before the flood. Right, you had the sons of Adam, you had, then you had the account of Cain and Abel, right? Cain was cut off in a flood. Abel survived through his descendants, right? Through men like Noah, right? Um, and then after the flood, you had what? Let's get that real quick, actually. Um, let's type in Seth. Right, see what we get. Right, so that's from Genesis. Right, so you have Adam, right, lost Abel, right, which is Habal, right, Habal means vanity, right. The preacher Solomon, right, he spoke about all things being vanity and vexation, right, which is cabal, right, which is like a vapor, right, when you breathe upon glass, right, it emits a vapor on the glass, right, which is uh, what Abel, what his name means, it means transitory, right, um, so you have, right, Seth being born, and then, right, um, you have a son named Enos, right, in the wash, right? Like it says in Genesis 4 and 26, then men begin to call upon the name of Yahweh, right? So you had Seth, Enos, right, going down, right, um, those that, as far as those Salakia that survived the flood, right, you have Noah, right, you have the line continued through Abraham, right, um, Isaac and Jacob, the chosen line, but the children of Seth, right, it's talking about, right, those that came, right, through uh, Noah, and then you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? Which, you know, you have you have um, Shemites, which are Elamites, which are right um, heathens, right? So it's not it doesn't have to do necessarily with the fact that you go down to Shem, right? You have to go through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to be of the uh, the chosen. Right, all the way down to Israel, right? So when it's talking about 
children of Seth, right? It's talking about these other nations, right? This is what's going to happen when Masha Yoshai returns, right? Uh, right, destroying, right? Because it's not going to be of Masha Yoshai. He's not going to go down, come down from the third heavens and just destroy everything, right? The Lord of hosts had purpose. He's spoken his word, right? And his word has to be fulfilled, right? Armageddon, right? Which is why he's called the Lord of hosts, right? Um, read about that and um, let's get there real quick. is um Joel uh, Joel chapter two And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong, that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Right? The Lord's camp is what? The armies of the earth, the chariots, right? The ICBM missiles, because it's spoken about throughout the whole Holy Bible. Right? What is it? Uh, I'll give you the precepts, right? Because that's what this thing is about, right? What Joel chapter 2, verse 1 and on down. Isaiah 5 and 26 and on down. Revelation 9 and 12 and on down. Isaiah 9 and 5, right? Ezekiel chapter 51, 15 and on down. Isaiah 54 and 16, right? These are all talking about the missiles, right? As well as in the Proverbs, right? The dark sayings, right? You hear about the arrow and the bow. The arrow is a modern day gun, missile, uh, right? Um, pricker, right? The bow is a modern day silo, right? The bow is a modern day trigger, right? And, and, and the arrow is the projectile, right? So just to make it simple, right? Because scriptures speak about the simplicity of Masha Yahushai, right? Simplicity of this word, right? And it says, Numbers 24 and 18, And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel, Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city, right? I just brought that out. That's the spirit, right? Um, let's go back to Psalms, so like yeah, 72, and um. right, so what does it say? Yet all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Right? That's what's going to happen in the kingdom of Hamashi Yahushai. Right? Numbers 24. Right? And 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. And shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the children of Seth. Right? Which is what I first read. Right? So, right? The scriptures are clear. Right? The star of the Jacob. Right? The scepter. Right? It's talking about the Holy One of Israel. Right? Masha Yahushai. Right? Um, Isaiah 61 and 7. 
so not good. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 and 7. For your shame, you shall have double. For confusion, they shall rejoice in the portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which Yahweh Shemel shall have blessed. Right? I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh, my show. My uh, soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Right? It's talking about the seed, right? The Lord is dealing with the seed, with the people, right? Which are, right, starting with his elect, right? Um, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 10, right? So this is also the part of the ministry as well. Right, being conversant in the uh, promises which was given unto our people, showing our people what the Lord is is looking for in His elect and His chosen. Right, because you have many are called, but few will be chosen, which is a third of the nation of Israel. Right, so you have to know what the Lord's will is. Right, to know how. Right, you must move in these latter days, right? Zechariah chapter 9 and 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, right? And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, right? Um, and his dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also... By the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein there is no water. Right? Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Right? Let's go Right, so Zechariah 9 and 10 and on down. Right. Right. All uh, the prisoners, prisoners in the pit. It's talking about the remnant, right? Where there is no water, right? It's spiritual water, right? Which is this word, right? Which is in the day of the great feast, Hamash Yoshai, right? He spoke about, right? Those that thirst come unto, right? To drink off the living waters, right? You read about that in the uh, last book of the book of Revelations, right? Turn ye, Zechariah 9 12, turn ye to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee, right? Stronghold what is what this word, the prophecies, right? The ancient customs, right? The Hebrew, right? The law, statutes, and commandments. Belief in the Mashiach Yahushai, right? Calling upon his name, right? The volume of the book, right? The whole understanding, right? Which is 100% truth, right? Zechariah 9.13 When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man, 
right? Because Amashe Yoshai, right, when he spoke to Peter, right, he said, put your sword down, right? Because those who live by the sword will die by the sword, right? So the Lord has raised the sons of Zion, right, to preach his word, which is a remnant, right, against Greece, which is so-called white man, right? Which is what made them as a sword of a mighty man, right? The sword is what? The sword of the spirit, right? Um, and uh, there's another precept, um, right? So the scriptures do not contradict themselves, right? So you have to be spiritual, right? Right. Um to so like yeah, two swords it is enough Bible hub. Right. Actually let's get it real quick. Luke 22 and 38. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go to the commentary because I'm curious about this. Right? Luke 22 and 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto him, unto them, it is enough. Right? Our two swords is what? The Apocrypha, the King James Bible. Right? A sword of the Spirit. Right? You combine them in two into one. Right? Uh, Peter... So the Ellicott's commentary for English readers, Behold, here are two swords. Peter, we find, had one, John 18 and 10. We can only conjecture who had the other, possibly Andrew, possibly one of the sons of thunder. Right? So the scriptures do not contradict themselves. Right? You have to know the context. You have to know, right, the spiritual meaning behind certain of these precepts. Right? And these Edomites are not given the spirit, right, of discernment, right? Which is why they don't know what it's talking about, right? But the so-called, right, Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, those that are prophesying on this word, right, the end, right, the prophecies of the Holy Bible, right? We know what we're talking about. We can explain it, right? And it's of, it's of the divine of the inspiration of the Rakak Wadash, right, which is the Holy Spirit, right? It is enough. Here again, there is a touch of grave irony. The two swords were enough, more than enough, for him who did not mean them to use the swords at all, right? So see, there you go. The word for enough may be noted as far more often by St. Luke than in the other Gospels. The mystical interpreta interpretation which sees in the two swords a symbol of the spiritual and temporal authority committed to St. Peter and to the Pope as its successor, right? Which is uh, folly, right? Which is why we pick the meat off the bones, right? You can't trust in everything that Esau says, right? Because he goes off, right? Again, our job is to filter the scriptures through this word, right? Like it says in the book of uh, Second Edris, right? To measure the time dil diligently within itself, right? Um, it stands on level with that which finds the relations of the church and the state foreshadowed in the two great lights. Of Genesis 1 and 16, which is off. Both are simply the dreams of a diseased fancy and find their fit home at last in limbo of vanities, right? How unbecoming is the worldly ambition of being the greatest to the character of a follower of Jesus who took upon him the form of a servant and humbled himself to the death of the cross? In the way to eternal happiness, we must accept to be assaulted and sifted by Satan. If he cannot destroy, he will try to disgrace or distress us. Nothing more certainly forebodes as a forebodes a fall in a professed follower of Christ than self confidence with disregard to warnings and contempt of danger. Unless we watch and pray always, we may be drawn into the course of the day into those sins which we were in the morning most resolved against. If believers were left to themselves, they would fall, but they are kept by the power of God and the power of Christ, right? Which is the power of this word, right? Those two swords. Right. Our Lord gave notice of a very great change of circumstances now approaching. The disciples must not expect that their friends would be kind to them as they had been. Therefore, he that has a purse, let him take it, for he may need it. They must now expect that their enemies would be more fierce than they had been, and they would need weapons. At the time, the apostles understood Christ to mean real weapons, but he spake only of the weapons of the spiritual warfare. Boom, there you go. 
The sword of the spirit is a sword which which disciples of Christ must furnish themselves. Right? Two swords. Right, you have the the uh, King James, right? And the Apocrypha, right? You cannot write this word is perfect, you gotta understand, right? The scriptures cannot be broken, right? By Shem Masha Yahushai, right? Like Masha Yahushai said, if they call them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, you just can't break this word, right? Because everything has, right? This is how the Hebrews wrote. They are like master con conjectures, conjecturators. Let me see if that's even a... Um, an opinion and conclusion form on the basis of incomplete information, right? So it was incompletely given, but through the spirit it was revealed, right? Because it, it is a <clears throat> solakia of the divine will of the Lord, right? these things written right examine um published interpreted by these heathens right and now the truth is coming out right which is why the word of god compared this word the kingdom of heaven unto uh um leaven hidden in three measures of meal right Right, because there had to be a dispensation of the gospel. There had to be the time of the Gentiles, right? They would take a hold of this word to forward their own uh, belly, right? But now you have right the Jews being the Jews being revealed, which are black. The prophets was coming back, right? Prophesying the words of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai, Hashem Kakwadash, right? And like I said. We, the Hebrews, right, the Israelites, are master conjectures, right? Uh, incomplete information, right? But, right, um, it was formed off incomplete information, right? Even the scrolls, right? We don't have all the scrolls. We don't have, right, all the sacred writings, but it's of the spirit, right? And this code, this this uh uh right, this is this word is written in code, right? So not all are gonna understand, right? Um but anyways, Zechariah um nine and fourteen, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. They shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls and as corners of the altar. Right? And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as a flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown. Lifted up as an ensign upon the land, right? Not being wanting to get this, right? Zechariah chapter 9 and 16, right? Like the other Yeshuamba, right? He goes into uh, various uh, translations. Right? Zechariah 9 and 16, right? And all the other elder apostles, right? Right? So how is the Lord God going to save his people, right? Through the chariots, right? The Lord the God will save his people on that day as the shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his hand like jewels and a crown, right? Let's go to the uh, other various translations, right? Is here in the King James Bible says the stones upon a crown, right? 
New King James Version, the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be like jewels of a crown, lifted up like a banner over his land. Right? The, 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 the jewels, like it says in the book of Malachi, right? I will gather it onto my jewels, right? His stones are what? Because they're the, spirit, the, the third temple, which is a spiritual temple, the lively stones. A uh, uh, holy priesthood, right? Being lifted up is what? Through the chariots, right? But let's look at the uh, Hebrew, just just to get a, uh, um, right? Lifted up on high over his land, right? Because we're going to be given spiritual power. We're going to be lifted up on high. We're going to be, we're going to descend from the heavens, right? We're willing for that number, right? Back into the holy land. Then we're going to lift ourselves up with the spiritual power, right? Which is metaphorically speaking and physically. We're going, to, we're going to go and gather these heathens out of the pits. Which is mainly the elite, right? These other nations will scarcely, scarcely, right, survive, right? They're going to have to be breeded back into the kingdom. into Back into their former numbers. And then they're going to have a foot up their ass. Right, and they're gonna they're gonna uh, put all that nonsense away, right? Zechariah nine sixteen shall save them. He shall give them a positive blessing. Or actually, I was gonna go into the uh, let's go into the Hebrew before we uh, read this, right? Ahawa. Right, Hawa meaning he or she or he is or that is, right? Uh, like uh, la means meaning like no, but la if you go into the uh, the Hebrew, it also means to it, right. By your wam, right? So he, that is in the day, Yahweh, right? Their God, right? Actually, let's go into the blue letter because the blue letter gives you a um, little bit more clear picture. Zechariah nine sixteen, just down there. It's just laid out in a better format. Zechariah 9.16 So what does it say? You see? Uh, so it says, And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as stones of a crown lifted up as, as the next sign upon his land. Right? So the Hebrew says, Wahawa, Hawashayim, Yahawa, right? And he will save them. Right? Hawashayim meaning to deliver. He will deliver them. Deliver the Ma, meaning um, deliver them. Right? Yahweh, their God, Allah, Allah, right? In the day by Yawam, uh, Hahawa, right? Which is what? The Ha meaning He, Hawa meaning He that is like a flock, like, like the flock of His people, Imawa, right? Because Kaya, Abanaya, right? Like stones upon a crown, right? Nazar meaning crown. Which it also means separation, right? Stones of separation, which the elect are separated unto this truth, right? Two thirds, right? They're separated as the goats to the slaughter, right? Matawana. Sawath, 
right? Like what? Like a banner, right? Or an ensign, right? Like, so it says, his people because as stones of a crown, stone or stones separation, right? Of, meaning ma, uh, la, right? Meaning to them, right? They will be, right? Nas meaning a banner, right? But when you add like an extra S to it, it, it intensifies the meaning of the word, right? As an ensign, right? Or meaning like a, uh, um, as ensigns, right? As meaning, um, uh, like banners, right? Because the children of Israel, right, the elect, or as a first sign and for the wonder, right? The fact that we're waking up, right? These nations are being confounded, right? To lift up, to exalt, right? Nasha or Nasas, right? It basically means the same as Nasha, meaning to lift up or to bear or a burden, right? Something to lift it up, right? Which is where you get the word Nashaya from, which just means a um, a ruler, right? Nasas, right? Lift up to exalt, right? Nas meaning a banner, but um, Nasas, right? It's sort of like a uh, same as Nasha, right? To be higher, cons conspicuous, right? Just to, uh, just so you see, really, um, let's see what that says a banner, standard column. Right, as columns, right, because when Moses lifted up the, the Nas, the uh, fiery serpent, right, upon the Nas, which is the banner, right, it was really like a pool, it was like a column, right, so basically, you can't really compare it to Nasha, because it's talking about something else, right, when you have Nas, which is a banner, right? We have the extra S that intensifies the word. So it's like like columns, right? Lifted up as, right? Because the stones separation, right? And of lifting up columns, right? There will be upon his land, right? Al Adamathawa, right? So Nasas. It's really talking about like a column, something thicker than a banner, right? You see how we can interpret, interpret, interpret the Hebrew, right? By comparing the text, right? So picture this, right? The serpent is what? The uh, serpent in the wilderness, right? Which which Moses made, which was the Nahushatan. So is that going to the Hebrew? It was placed upon like a banner, right? I mean, compared to like this is Moses' hand, right? Really like a thin, like a thin piece of metal work. Right, here's a serpent. Right, but when you're thinking about a column, right? What are you thinking about? Chariots. Thinking about something thick. Something like, right? So this is nice right here. This is... A banner, a column, right? When you intensify Hebrew words, you add an extra oomph to it, right? Masas, this is a column, right? You see, in the, in the day, right, there should be a stones, right? A Benaya Nazar of separation, right? But this says crown. Right, but the elect was separated for this thing, which is deliverance, a sheep. Right. 
right? Stones separation, right? Of of columns, right? Of being made like of right of columns upon the earth, right? Because they're gonna be made like literally into a column. This is the vision that Zechariah saw. He didn't see them ascend up into the chariots. He saw them in the column as if they were turned into a column, right? But lifted up, right? You don't have to necessarily say lifted up, right? Right, so you get what I'm saying. That's the chariot precept right there. I'm gonna have to <laughs> click on that, right? Because I got a few of them. I've been sifting through. Um, Zechariah 9 and 17, right? Because what does it say? For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and you wine the maids. Right, so there you have it. Right. Um let's see what else we got right here. Actually that's it for that. Let's go to book of um Jeremiah chapter thirty three, verse nineteen. Right? This is Jeremiah thirty three nineteen. Let's get that. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord. If you can break my covenant of the day, my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me, moreover. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which the Lord hath chosen, he hath even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people. They should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with day or night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the seed of Jacob and my servant. So that I will not take any of your seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If I will cause a captivity to return and have mercy on them. Right? Now, let's look at Jeremiah 33, 26. Now, this is just for my own personal study. We'll see if that ruler is Nashaya. Nope. Mashal. Right. So let's attempt to um, understand this preset. Let's see. Or simulate <laughs> because um actually let's get that real quick assimilate <laughs> take in information ideas and core culture and understand fully call some to something to resemble lichen Right, cause something to resemble, come to resemble, make it sound more like of another, and the same with next word. Um, uh, uh, to like it. <clears throat> the absorption and digestion of food or nutrients. By the body or any biological system, the process of taking in and fully understanding information or ideas, right? Keep that in mind, right? 
comes awry. Yaquab, right? Even the seed of Jacob, right? Um, and David, my servant, right? Um, Let's say Amas, right? So that I would, uh, it's talking about like a um, forsake, right? Or like uh, passed away. Maas, right? Really, it means like in the sense of uh, like abandoning, right? Let's look at that real quick. Or rejection, right? More specifically, right? My ass. Keep that in mind. Gam meaning even the seed of Jacob, Zariah Yaquab, right? And David, my servant, I will reject, right? Um, ma quahath of taking, right? Ma meaning of, qua to take, of their seed, mazariwa, right? Uh, for what? Mashaliam. Mashal meaning a proverb, but also means like a, a to assimilate, right? Well, here is translated to rulers. Yeradis translated onto ruler or rada, but that's not what it's talking about. The word Mashal is talking about something else, right? Mashal is what? To make like, to assimilate, right? Right, parable, right? To rule, have dominion, right? And really, that's not what that means. It just means a parable or to assimilate, right? Because... What was the job of the rulers, right? To assimilate the subjects, right? According to what was decreed, right? Right, or the uh, the governors, right? The, the, at the end of the day, the authority, right? So really you could say, Mashal means like, right? Of their seed, right? Uh, for them to be authorities, right? Mashalium, right? to the seed of Abraham, right? Yashak, right? Which is Isaac or Yatazahak, right? is right translated as Isaac right Isaac and Jacob because of a return to the cap their captivity right Shabaya meaning right to be placed into captivity or slavery right Shabawatham meaning to their captivity. Right? Because I will return, right? I will mean I mean I. Shawa meaning to return. Atha. Shabaya, right? Which means captivity. But Shabawatham, right? To 
uh, to to their captivity or to your captivity, right? Wa <coughs> right? Right, and we'll right, and we'll be of tender mercies to them, right? Because Raham it means like a uh, tab, right? To show oneself tender, right? Or tender as in like a uh, uh, cherishing or gentle emotion, right? Tender compassion, right? Basically, it means compassion. What God is showing compassion unto his elect, right? I will cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so I will not take any of his seed to be rulers, right? And he ones of authority over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause her captivity to return, right? And, right, and will be compassionate, right, over them, right? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39 and uh, 17, right? Ezekiel 39, 17. Let's get that real quick. So like it. Ezekiel 39, 17, right, Lord willing, you're edified, right, Ezekiel 39, 17, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feather fowl, to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves, and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, and of lambs, and of goats, and of bullocks, and all them fatlings of Bashan. And you shall eat fat till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Right? Because, like I read, right, in the, uh, what was it, um... I might have to go back to that real quick. Zechariah. Zechariah. So like, yeah. Chapter 9. Because what is Zechariah 9.16 really talking about? Like I said, it's talking about the chariots. Right? You go into the Hebrew, right? You, you can even, it even tells you. <clears throat> right, that they will be saved, right? They'll be lifted up as an ensign upon his land, right? Now let's go to Isaiah, right? Just so you know that the prophets, they saw all these things, right? Isaiah 62 and 1, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness go off as brightness, right? <coughs> Which is his word, right? Compared unto what? The light, right? The Proverbs 6 and 23. Reproofs and instructions are the way of life, right? His word is compared unto water, but as unto light as well, right? And salvation the rough as a lamp that burneth. Right, so let's go to that Isaiah 62 and 1. Right, so what does this say? I 
La Ma'ayan, right? Right. Right. So I now means to answer, but also means like an in ma'ina mayan meaning like an intent. Right? Or the intent of Zion, Tzayawan, right? La a will not I a uh Hasha right meaning what to hold your peace keep silent be still <coughs> really goes with hasa right it means all right to hold your peace right and then you read about that in the law right i believe that's deuteronomy It, um, hold your peace, Deuteronomy. I knew I was in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. Oh, here it is.
this might be it actually, so I can see it. This is why it's good to uh, study the law. So you know what the hell you're talking about. Right. Hassan, right? I should get that real quick. So I can put the wrong thing. So was it um numbers thirteen and thirty? All right, so let's get that real quick. Hush. Where, you know, it's a stronger version of saying be silent basically means keep your mouth shut. Sat. Be silent. Hus. Hasha, hasa. Right? Hush, keep silent. Which is where you saw gets hush. Why? Because what is say in Isaiah 62? It says Asha, right? Asa. <coughs> Asha, to make still be quiet, to be silent. All right, Asha, to be still, right? So Asa literally means like to hush hasha mean to be still harash mean to be silent right because like i brought up in previous videos hasha is like an artificer who is quiet upon his work right <clears throat> read about that in number chapter 30 right when a man forbids either his young daughter or his wife from committing unto a vow, right, he's going to ask him to hold their peace, right? If he holds his peace, actually, then their vow will stand. If he speaks on it, then their vow will not stand, right? Or whatever oath they bind themselves upon, right? So you have, like I said, Harash. To be silent. Hasa to, to hush. Like shh. Or hasha meaning to be still. Like, like be still. Right? Relax. Right? In modern terms. Right? Right? 
Okay, so Isaiah 62, right? Right, so Mayan, right, mean, I know I'm meaning to answer. I know it also means to afflict, right? But, right, Mayan, meaning like an intent, right? La meaning two or four. Mayan, Mayan meaning intent, right? For the intent of Zion, right? <clears throat> La -a, meaning will not I be still? And for the intent of Jerusalem, right? La, -a, right? Ah. Uh, Shaquat, meaning I, meaning I. Shaquat, meaning says to rest. But uh, let's let's let me show you. Let me show you what that says. <coughs> right, laquat meaning to gather. Right, shaquat meaning what it says. Let's see to rest. Have quiet. Shaquat to fall. Tranquil. It's talking about tranquility, right? Quite undisturbed, right? But it's talking about tranquility, right? Because when you're tranquil, right, you sink down, you kick back, right? It can mean to kick back as well, right? Or relax, right? But mainly this has to do with the fact of being tranquil, tranquility. <clears throat> right? Right, so like I said, the quiet is like like a gathering, right? gather right berries right or you could right shaquat berries right meaning right sha meaning like a, like teeth right you eat the berries and you're just gathering them slowly right in your mouth and then you you relax off of that the berries give you like a relaxing scent and then next thing you know, you have the itis and you kick back, right? And you're tranquil, shaquat, right? You see, this is why it was called a living language because it's not language of, right, of, um, right, symbols. I mean, it's not a language of, uh, uh, of, right, confusion, right? It's literally made off symbols, right? Which leads to my next, uh, right? And I've been needing to bring this out for a while, <laughs> right? Because that's why Hebrew is called the living language, right? Because it can be interpreted based off its symbols, right? Phonographic alphabet, right? Like yeah. Right, because you had what? Let's look at the four Hebrew Bible scripts. Right. This is from the, and it's all hieroglyphics, right? This is what Joseph introduced to the Egyptians, right? A better interpretation of the hieroglyphs, right? Right. Um, you 
see the that's the, the rush right you have uh, um i guess that's a bayath rabah one is more abundant than daylight than a baker than than the breaker than a freeman right so you have rab which is these two right here rab um that's a wa yeah Yan, right? The the yeah, uh, yeah Yan. Um, man, right? The squiggly. That's a ma. The na. More than, um, ha hana hanaga. <clears throat> and Don Maha of the Baker up up. I mean ox. The pa I mean in mouth, right? So you have the ox a lap, which is a chief of mouth, right? Which is means to bake, right? Which is also means a baker, right? Because he is a chief. He is a chief of the one who bakes the food, right? And the ha just makes it. It's just right. That's added on. Ma, uh, ma har, right of. The um, Freeman of right Mahar right of the head right because the ha meaning the right or the, that's ha har right but you get the point um. Look, our bound servitude had lingered. Moses then provoked astonishment. Is it your astonishment because of the lady? You can look that up yourself, but I want to show you this main one, which is slack. Yeah, I need to get to it. I don't think it's on here. Uh, it's lucky. Here it is. So the hierographic Hebrew original phonogrammatic alphabet by Joseph, eighteen fifty nine BC. Right, which is in Egypt, right? <clears throat> Abagada ha wa Abagada ha wa Zahataya Kalamana Sa a pa taza. Warashata Right, she introduced to the uh, Pharaoh, right? Then you have the Gizar calendar, right? Which is why it was assimilated into what you would call the Phoenician, right? Because it all dates back to Hebrew, Nabatean, Sabian, 
right? That's a Hamitic script, but it has Hebrew elements, right? The Nebitian, which is essentially Arabic, right? With essentially a cursive form of Hebrew, which is essentially the Hebrew, which is essentially Aramaic, right? Aramaic is Hebrew. Arabic is like cursive Hebrew. Nabitian is Hebrew, right? Because it looks just like the modern day Hebrew, right? Which is what we use, right? We also use the Paleo Hebrew, which is that's Greek. Paleo means ancient, right? That's but that's Greek, right? So it's all Hebrew at the end of the day. Um, so Paleo Hebrew, Siloam Tunnel, right? Silver Scroll, right? You can see the uh, right? Abba Gada. Um, <clears throat> what is it? Abba Gada. The high is on there for some reason. Wazaha. The high is on there. Ya Kalama. Right. Abagata Hawa Um Zaha the Taz and Donner Yakalamanasa Apa Tazakwara Shata. So that's Paleo Hebrew, right? Abagata Hawa. Zaha the Zaz and on there Taya the Taz and on there Yakala Manasa Apataza Kwarashata. So here, when you go to the seals and Bula Abagada was a Hataya Kala Manasa Apataza Kwarashata. Right. And leading up to the Aramaic Hebrew, which really is not Vatian if you go if you look into it, you can look it up yourself. <clears throat> which is called Aramaic, which really that's 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 really what the original Hebrew looks like. Right? Then you have the Masoretic Hebrew, which is the vowed Hebrew, right? So let's let's just click on that real quick. Now back to you in the script. Now look at this. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna show you real quick. What I was looking for, right? Nabatian, right? So you have a, you have ba, right? And highlight what uh, what looks like the modern day Hebrew. A, ba, kamal, right? Da, which is da, bagada ha, right? Which looks like this right here. Which is this? Wa, right? Which is in the modern day Hebrew, right? Za, right? Really, it's just that. Ha, is what that? Ta, um, ya, right? Which is really just this right here, like this, like it shows right here. Ka, which is either ka or ka. La, 
ma either na or na sa a pa right which is pa ta za twa ra sha ta right Look, you're gonna find out that this is the same thing I brought up in the previous video, right? So, what do we got right here? So look at this, right? You can't tell me this is not Hebrew, right? That's right there, what? Na, um, na pa, um, sa. bar right but you, you can see it for yourself what bar parai right anyways so yeah right Hieroglyphic Hebrew. Look at this. What does this say? Um, the world, the world's oldest alphabet came from Hebrew. Yourself. Now let's look at this article. Hebrew may be the world's oldest alphabet. A photo of Sinai 
375A stone slab from Egypt, which is now located in the Harbour Semitic Museum. This photo contains the name Ahisamach. Exodus 31 and 6 on the two horizontal lines. Right, the oldest recorded alphabet may be Hebrew, according to a controversial new study by archaeologists and ancient inscription specialist Douglas Petrovic. Israelites in Egypt took 22 ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and turned them into the Hebrew alphabet over 3,800 years ago. Right, which is not true. Right, because the Hebrew was there since the days of the patriarch Ivar. <clears throat> and let's look let's look at what patriarch means right since we're throwing that word around so much nowadays even the caliphs right talk about patriarchs right We just a kata. Patriarch, late 12th century, patriarchy, one of the Old Testament fathers, progenitors of the Israelites, right? And so that alone cuts you other nations, you know, you're you're a bunch of imposters. Um From old French patriarch, 11th century, and directly from late Latin, patriarcha, Tertullian, from Greek, patriarchis, chief or head of family, right? You got to dealing with the Greek. Come on now. Because really, when you want to get specific, you're talking about upper ash, which is a head of a family, right? And then you're talking about a clan, which is uh, Mashapach, which is what, what people would call family uh, now. Or in the, uh, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The, um, the Yiddish, which is um, Miss, Miss Patch. Maspacha or something like that. But it's really is um Ma um Masapach Mashapach, right, which is a clan. Right. <clears throat> From Pater Father, right? Archon to rule, Archon, also used as in honorific title, certain bishops of the highest rank in the early church. Notably, notably those of Antioch, um, Alexandria, and Rome, the meaning the father ruler of family is by 1817. Um, let's see what else we got right here. Mashapach, which is a clan. It doesn't mean family, it means a clan. Right, so we say Shalom Mashapach doesn't mean peace family, it means peace clan. So you're, that you're going off, it's not what that means, right? Either, right? right. You, 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 you know what the hell you're talking about. Which is why you got to go into the Hebrew, right? book of numbers right the the uh the the tribes were divided into clans not families right because if you say family shalom family right you're really saying shalom clan because if you would say shalom family you would say shalom right tribe right shabbatia 
Shalom Shabbatia, right? Mashapach meaning it means a clan, meaning a a a sub um a sub tribe, right? Come on now. Anyways, um, so it says the discovery of this, um, like here. The discovery, the discovery of this early Hebrew Hebrew alphabet, has proved controversial to scholars who dispute the dates of Petrobic has for the Israelites to stay in Egypt, 430 years to the very day as recorded in Exodus 12 and 40 through 41. Equally in 1876, 1446 BC, really is 1500, circa 1500 BC, <clears throat> arguing that biblical dates are unreliable. Skeptics have also disputed the Hebrew identification, arguing the early alphabet could it be any number of Semitic languages. The road to Petrovic's discovery started back in 2012 when he was researching hieroglyphic in inscriptions online from an Egyptian stone slab dated 1842 BC. The slab Known as Sinai 115, identified Joseph and his sons Ephraim and Manasseh, all figures from the Hebrew Bible, the latter of whom inscribed the hieroglyphs on the slab himself, something in the text Manasseh wrote. Translation 6 Lebanite, Leban, Levantines, Hebrews of Bethel, of Bethel, the beloved, which referred to himself, his son, and four other Hebrews on a turquoise mining expedition caught the eye of Petrarch. It was the world's oldest letter, he says. Right. Um, on this otherwise Middle Egyptian caption, where a Canaanite syllabic in the world's oldest attested proto consonantical letter B depicting the house for Hebrew consonant by yet, Petrovic told FoxNews.com it was a single proto consonant consonant. Consonantal Hebrew letter that helped me to understand that the world's oldest alphabet, the language which, which has been identified for 150 years of scholarship, is Hebrew. Right? Which is, uh. Which this would say. What? Kind of scattered. Shakach. Dividing words properly was also a hurdle because the letters all run together without any spaces between them or punctuation. Right, so it says, uh, Say Samapa Sana Maba Shama. The Watazaba for the what? You can look that up yourself. Um, 
All right, the birth of Hebrew writing, history of four Hebrew scripts and alphabets used by the Jews. During the time of Abraham, Hebrew was a spoken language. It went over writing script of any kind or alphabet. First record of Hebrew script is, is a signet, real ring, sealed Jew to give to Mars a pledge, Genesis 38. Legal, legal contracts at this time were based upon rituals like placing a pan, hand on the jet of tools or taking a shoe off. The Hebrew people acquired a double bonus after. Damn. I don't know why I did that. Under Joseph Ephraim Manasseh, by not only creating first Hebrew writing, but also inventing the words, world's first true alphabet. Renewed from recently translated Sinai inscriptions, that Joseph borrowed 22 Egyptian hieroglyphic symbols as the character alphabet for each sound in the Hebrew language, which is not true. Because Adam named the, the cattle and everything based off the Hebrew. Right? The alphabets of all their languages, English, use these same ancient symbols and spelling out words. The Jews have reused four different alphabets to spell out Hebrew words. The first is called Hierographic Hebrew, which was invented by Joseph, which was not. It was popularized by Joseph when he went to Egypt. Right? <clears throat> And used by God in Ten Commandments of Moses in the Book of Law that was placed inside the Ark of the Covenant. The shapes of each of the 22 letters became simplified over time down to the time of Samuel, who created a second script called Paleo Hebrew. Right? I wish he didn't really create it. I mean, it was really, it was always there. It was just evolved over time. Right? But it all goes back. Right to what the what you would call the modern day Hebrew, right? Because of Paleo, that's Phoenician, mixed in with uh, Sabian, right? Mixed in with 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 Hamitic uh, scripts, Egyptian hieroglyphs, right? But it all goes back to Hebrew, right? Because all Hebrew is is a symbol of the things around you right which is the ah right which is an ox buys by yeah right the uh, uh the guy is the foot right you have the da the door the lap right you have ha which is a breath right which really the ha, you combine it with the ha, right? Which is a gate, right? Or a wall, right? Which is half of a breath, right? You have a wall, right? Has two sides to it, right? You have two, two, two ends to it. A ha is just one end of the other, right? The wa being a tent peg, the za being a weapon, zayan. Right, or what you would call Rizaya Salakia. Right, Ta's a basket. Right, the Yah going to Yah, that's a hand. Right, the name of Yahweh is, is Yah. Right, hand meaning He. Right, Ha, which is going into what? Uh, that means breath or to reveal, right? Why I mean secure, right? Ha, right? He exists, right? You have the ka, the palm, the la meaning lama to learn, right? Which is a staff, right? The staff of your learning is your intelligence, right? The ma is the water, the na it meaning seed, perpetualness, right? Asa, right? Which is um, sana, right? Which is a bush. Right, a thorn, a prick. Right, I mean an eye. Right, pa mouth. Right, taza side. Right, qua sunrise. Right, which is a uh, qua. Right, ra meaning the head. Sha, right. Sha meaning teeth. The wa is what. Right, what um. 
right? Covenant. <coughs> like some say, right? So, so like it. So let's look at this hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic Hiskos hoax. Hoax. Rebutted to Lou White's article hieroglyphic Hiskos hoax. Right, a gentleman I, the one I named, came out with a book a few years ago, the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, showing charts with alphabets arranged with letters mixing together with the Paleo Hebrew letters, with about seven to eight or eight of these foreign hieroglyphic pictographic letters as now we see on these internet displaying the name of Yahweh in the script. Lee White is of course referring to me and my lexicon. Luke continues with a few paragraphs later. Yahweh wrote his name in the familiar characters we know as Paleo Hebrew and as we can see on the great Isaiah scroll at the Hekal Sefer shrine of the book and Yerushalayim. It's real evidence from the past and it's not a hoax. The other doesn't exist in the real world only in charts. Just like the fake charts of the geological column below is an example from the great Isaiah scroll, which Lou mentions where we see the name of God written in Paleo Hebrew. I would like to point out that God did not write his name here, as he stated in the paragraph above, but is a scribe's copy of Isaiah's original scroll. All right. So let's, let's read into that, see what that's talking about. All right. The book of Sirach says to uh, trace wisdom's ways right what is a Lou points out that, that nowhere in the archaeological record do we find the name Yahweh written in ancient pictographic script which Lou is calling Egyptian and his goes hieroglyphics Hieroglyphics, his perspective is that the ancient pictographic script was not the origin of the Paleo Hebrew script as I as I and others teach, but that the ancient pictographic script was developed out of the Paleo Hebrew by Egyptians. Right? Uh let's read on down. Right. So really they're all wrong, right? A lot is really just this, right? The uh, is just this, right? Symbolizing an ox with horns, right? Here's letter Alep. Left from the Lee White's Hebrew alphabet chart. Ah, Aleph, Hebrew, Aramaic. Ah, Ox, Alpha, Greek, Ah. It was a bobbing's head, bovine's head. Right. But really, it's how you would sacrifice an oxen, right? You would cut the head in half, right? Pass through the middle parts as a ceremony, right? You would <laughs> split the head in two, all right? Which is why, and the uh, Syriac is it's just a line going up, right? But really, it's this right here, right? By being a house, <laughs> right? You have what? The house, right, and the driveway, right. Ga, that's a foot, right. Da is a door, right. And, uh, ha, right. Which is like, which 
inches of breadth. Right, tempe, bois, right, azar, um, ha, right, which looks like ha, but there's two sides to it. Two breaths, right? Which is like a, a gate, right? Um, tie is a basket, right? Ya being a hand, right? Ka being a palm, la that's a staff. Shepherd staff, which is where you get a lap, which is a chief, right? Which is a an ox, la meaning a staff, pa meaning a mouth, the chief of the animals, right? Because he commands the animals with his mouth. Um, ma. Water, nah, see, perpetualness. Sa, staff for, uh, meaning sides like a thorn, a bush. Uh, eye, pa, mouth. Taza, side. Right, taza, wide. Meaning to hunt. Right. Because you're sitting in your house, meaning your hiding place. The wa is is your the trap, and a taza you're sitting on the side watching the prey, right? So you can hunt it, right? Which is also known as venison, right? <laughs> Kwa is what a sunrise. It's like you didn't write that the right way. Right, really, you just write it like this. Wa, ra, I had, sha, teeth, and tha, meaning the covenant, right? Because every time you go to make a sacrifice, you take, lay two sticks, you light the fire, and you offer up your oxen, and that's your covenant, the wa. Right, you have the sacrifice area, and you have the area where you make your mark. You put the, 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 the tank peg, right? You put the beast on it and offer it up on there, right? Passover proof lies in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Pharaoh's papyrus scrolls may not seem the most reliable sources for investigating the story of the Israelites exodus, but Egyptologist Gaelic Diane has found them much compelling evidence to support the historic his, historicity of the biblical tale. Alright, let's read on down. So you really don't see anything there. So like yeah. this was a, this is what I was gonna get to. Phonographic writing, right? What does it say? Throughout human history. Writing systems have always evolved signs that represent some aspect of pronunciation. Phonographic writing symbols represent syllables or segments, right? A character as a syllable unit. Japanese has two sets of syllabary, right? Versus logographic, which is the original, the living language, starting with the Hebrew, right? having to do with symbols right so when you see right certain languages are written out a certain way right is because right they mean a certain sound 
like in the modern day English. A, A, B, C is is C because it's it's written like it is written as a C. It's just a curve, but it just means C. There's no symbol to it, but there's a um phonographic, right? It's a syllable, right? Um, let's look that up real quick. Syllable. Right, late 14th century from Anglo French syllable, alteration of old French syllable, modern French 12th century syllable from Latin syllaba, from Greek syllabe, which is held together, <clears throat> select a syllable, several sounds or letters taken together. Right, it's, it has to do with sounds that pertain to the letter. <clears throat> Right, we're putting together letters, different sounds that, that make letters that make a sound. Right, not necessarily symbol it has to do with symbols, it's more has to do with sounds. Right, but phonographic writings, but a logographic is what? Let's get that. A logographic writing system is the oldest type of writing system. Logographic writing system use symbols that represent a complete word or morphine. Chinese this is an excellent example of logographic script, but most languages also include logograms such as numbers and the ampersand. Really, Chinese is, is like Hebrew, right? Japanese as well, right? I've seen a video you can look it up on how to write right certain certain things in uh, uh, what are they called and um, how the Japanese or Chinese write their language which is um, actually just look that up Yeah, what the hell is called? Japanese script. Oh, kanji, that's what it's called. Chinese kanji. I think that's the same thing. So I guess Kanji is like a Japanese thing. Hanzi. Yes, I guess it's Japanese. Hanzi. Hanzi. Yeah, so Kanji is Japanese and Hanzi is Moabitish. <laughs> right. So kanji, Japanese person. Hanzi, Japanese person. Screw yourself. I don't know why the hell it says that.
Entry, play me. I don't know, my web is got issues. I may. Anyways, yeah, phonographic, right? Me done, um, you see me done it several times, right? To the power of spirit, y'all, by Shimmy Al Shai, by Shimmy Kakwadash, right? Lord willing, you're edified, right? Those that study the Hebrew, right? Going to the prophecies, could because at the end of the day, this is about what prophecy, right? Whether you believe it or not, right? Um, Jeremiah, uh, so yeah, right, Isaiah 62, hold on, did I get that? Let's get that real quick. I'm curious to see what that says. So like, yeah, you know, we're learning every day as well, right? Every day is a new learning experience, right? That's part of this. Uh, for those that are, right, um, men of inquisition, right? You you're gonna uh, you're gonna always observe, right? You're always going to question things, right? And lo and behold. Right, la my la my on right for the purpose of Zion will not right ah meaning I Pasha right be still right and for the purpose of Yerushalayim will not I right um be tranquil right even ad yataza to go out. Right, ka meaning like, naga, right, brightness, right, that's what it says, right, shining splendor, right, brightness, brightness. really is talking about present presence right because in the God it means when you present yourself to someone but when you have presence right you illuminate the room right you give uh, proper balance to the uh, um, uh, to the ambience right it's not really about just being there you have to be there but you also have to be square. You know? You have to be right. You have to be um, like the room. You know, the room is properly measured. You know, you have to properly be measured, right? On all angles, right? You're looking at the window. You have to look at the window of your mind, right? And look at the windows of your, of your, um, the sides but really you're focused on the front but you have to be you have to have perception right you have to have mental perception right so though you see forward you're not looking everywhere you're looking forward but you know your surroundings right you know your 360s you know your 90s right you know your Rahabs you know your Iraq right which is your width your length 
right? And uh, um, your Rama, right? Which is uh, your height, right? But that's all about, right, uh, perception, right? A presence, right? Not perception, but a guy is really like a perception, right? The God meaning to present oneself, your, right? The actual verb itself, right? To what goes out, id, yataza, kanaga, right? Like, Perception of righteousness, right? Like, right? Perception of righteousness. Righteousness is perceived, right? Wa Yashawaita, right? And salvation, right? Like a torch, right? La, la Payad. That's what it means, right? When Abraham made the sacrifice, right? And a great darkness fell upon him while he was snoring or while he was in the trance, right? Because when you're snoring, meaning you're in a deep sleep, right? It has to do with halab, right? Meaning to be fat. But when you're fattened, right? Really, you have eaten well enough to where when you're ready to rest, right? You're rested and filled in your belly. So your belly, right? You still have chemicals running through you. You still have, right, these uh, altering chemicals in your body. So you're still processing them in your, in your system, right? But La Payade is really like a torch, right? Or a, or a, uh, a lamp. We can't really say a lamp because a lamp is, is uh, Nayar. Right, nar. Right, that's a lamp. Right, this is talking about a napalm or a, or a torch. More specifically, right, let's get that real quick. Right, so you have La Payade, which is a torch, right? Or thunder. Right, because Barak is lightning. The actual strike of, right, the swiftness of, of, of striking, of lightning, right? But you have thunder, right, which is a, uh, right, the force of it, the burning of the thunder, right? <sighs> Lighting is more talking about swiftness, <sighs> right? But when the thunder hits, right, it's more like a, it causes a, a torching, a torch or napalm effect. Right, so the lightning is more is Barak, like a uh, when the the, the 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 swiftness of the lightning. Right, really, it just means lightning. La Payad is talking about a torch. Right. Right. So id until goes out. Right, like the presence of righteousness. And salvation like a torch, right? Yapayar, 
right? Which is a consummation, right? The world is going to, right? This truth is going to consume all these false, right, understandings, right? Right? Cleaning, gathered, bundle, um, right, and consummation. Lord Yahweh Bashim El Shai has consummation declared upon his places as well, right? So, you know, whether you like it, believe, believe it or not, right, you know, it's already written, right? It's already been declared, right? Like the book of Psalms says, like the, the, uh, the Lord God has settled his word in the heavens, right? And now, right, you look at the bottom of a pond, you see your reflection, you see what's already on the other side, you see yourself on that reflection, which is how the heaven works. There's a water in the heavens, and then there's a reflection on the planet Earth, right? Which the Lord's word is reflected in the mortal realm because he's spoken in the spiritual realm, so right uh which is where Esau gets all that above below nonsense you know he twists it but really the lord god right made things above and below he's showing you that he is the power right um so yeah right Esau get he gets all this from the hebrew right from us we are right those who who have um prepared these things right through uh the most high god right it's all of of of, of yahweh shimei shai right we're just uh um i forgot what that precept is but we are part of the scales and the balance at the end of the day All right simply put but um let's get um where was i jeremiah i think i was in jeremiah so yeah there's precepts concerning chariots, right? Jeremiah 33 and 19. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, actually I got that already. Ezekiel 39 and 17. Right? What does that say? And thou son of man, thou say the Lord God, speak unto every father fowl, to every beast of the field. Um, assemble yourselves and come and gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, which I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. That you shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink of the blood of the princes of the earth. The rams of bloods and of goats, bullocks, and all the families of Bashan, and you shall eat till you till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken, my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus you shall be filled on my table, horses and chariots, with mighty men, and all men of war, saith the Lord God, and I'll set my glory amongst the heathen, and all these heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them, so the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from the day that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they transgressed against me, therefore hid I my face from them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so fell they all by the sword. Right? What does it say, right? In Isaiah chapter 5 and 26, right? At least recently brought this out at camp, right? And he will lift up ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. 
None shall be weary nor stumble amongst them, neither shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall the gird of their loins be loosed, nor the latch of their shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows bent, their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like whirlwind. Their roaring lion, their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall be they shall roar like young lions. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in, the, and in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow, and a light as darkness in the heavens are rough. Right? Let's talk about the ICB and missiles. Right? And close that with Jeremiah uh, chapter 51. Right? And I'm going to have to do a, uh, another part to this lesson, right? Might be a short part, but we still, we got to get it done, right? Right, um, Jeremiah 51, 36. Therefore thus saith, Yahweh Shemi al Shai, behold, I will please thy cause, and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea, make her springs dry, and Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, and astonishment, and a hissing without an inhabitant. They shall war together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelps, right? Isaiah 5 and 26, and those are the precepts I brought out earlier. Their heat, while I make their feasts, right? Did not Apostle Har, right? Speak about America Babylon the Great being a giant, right? Uh, 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 altar, right? You can have uh, 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 offering, burnt offerings, which is two thirds of our people, the Edomites, the other nations as well. Right, I will make them drunken that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, saith the Lord. Right, in the heat of the missiles, right, the feast is what the heathens, which includes two thirds of our people, right? They're gonna make the missiles drunken with blood of men, right? And they're gonna rejoice, what? Why? Because they're gonna accomplish their, their purpose, which is their target, hitting their target. And sleep a perpetual sleep, right? Because after that, right, their purpose is done, right? They're going to sleep and then, right? They're not going to, right, blow up again. They're not going to hit the, hit the ground and then jump up and dance, right? They're going to purpose, right, finish their purpose, which, to which they were made, right? And I will bring them down like lambs of the slaughter, like rams with he goats, Right? Bashim Mashik Yahweh Shai, right? So with that, right, Lord willing you are edified, right? It's Brother Yatazadak here with Israel. This is the part two of the afflictions of the just and the the uh, work of the ministry and the large diverse doctrines. Giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, Say Pam Yashurala Baba Shalom. And shalom.